out of wrestling with professional wrestler Colt Cabana. Doing? Come on in, sit down, relax. You're about to listen to the Art of Wrestling, a professional wrestling podcast. It's a life podcast. It's a personal journal. It's an entryway into the minds, the souls, the hearts, and the lives of the people involved in the world of professional wrestling. I am your host. My name is Colt Cabana. I'm a, I'm an entertainer. I'm a podcaster. I'm a bike rider. Most importantly, though, I am a professional wrestler, and I am coming to you live from my studio apartment in Chicago, Illinois. Before I go any further, this is Fan Sport and Listener Sport Podcast, supported by people just like you. We give it to you free of charge every single Thursday. ColtCabana.com, iTunes, SoundCloud, wherever you get your podcasts from. A couple great ways that you can support, rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes. Tell a friend. Snapchat it over to your buddy. Best way that you could support, though, ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, T-shirts, buttons, pictures, posters, DVDs, Micro Brawlers, Wrestling Road Diaries 3. Thank you for your support. ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt. Dot com. Fresh off my tour from Australia, Matt Cross joins me on the podcast Sticks. Uh, this didn't actually even happen in Australia. It happened a couple of weeks before Australia when we were in Cleveland together wrestling for old wrestling. That's O-L-D-E, old with an E, where old time uh, strong man, gymnast man, Matt Cross wrestled Matt Classic. As I said Matt Classic, I felt like I was uh, Will Ferrell talking like... Harry Carey, which is what I described to my mom that I did for Ring of Honor now. I was trying to explain to her that I had this new announcing role, and the best way I could describe it, I didn't know if she would know what color commentary was. I said, Ian Riccoboni is Steve Stone, and I am Harry Carey. And that was the first time I even put together that I, I'm, can I be the new Harry Carey? That'd be amazing. Many in wrestling, when they do commentary, they're like, I want to be Jim Ross. I want to be Gordon Soley. I want to be Elijah Burke. Okay, nobody ever said that. But I'm making a stance here for the first time. I want to be wrestling's Harry Carey. Holy cow. I think it could be done, and I'm looking forward to it. Oh, but I'm also looking forward to you listening to this talk with uh, Matt Cross, M-Dog. He was on the very, very first sessions of the podcast, and if you want to go listen to that one, all the archives are on howl.fm slash Colt. You know, it was from uh, six or seven years ago. And since then, he you know, he's grown a beard and he's traveled to a million more countries. And I love and I think Matt and I, I don't know if we have this competition of who wants to be Mr. Independent Wrestling. But I know, you know, he wears like a badge of honor on his sleeve. And he's like, this is what I do. I'm a warrior. And I, I kind of want to be like, hey, me too, buddy. And then I know that there's someone listening or there's another wrestler who's like, hey, hey, that's what I'm doing. So it's, you know, sometimes I get in my head and I think that like, ah, people don't understand. But then I'm, but then I, I got to remember that just that this is everyone's life. We're all doing this. Everyone in their own way are making these silly trips and we do it for the silly experience. I'm doing something for the experience this week. I'm recording this a little early Because I'm flying out to the Mountain of Wales. Uh, I probably said that wrong. The Mountains of Wales. I'm going to be in Wales and I'm going to be in the mountains doing a series called The Do Lectures. I was invited to speak at The Do Lectures. And this is something, an experience that never that I would have been able to experience, you know, if I went and worked at Walgreens corporate like my mother wanted me to. And I don't know, I got an email, and and these ladies were like, do you want to do this thing? And I was like, ugh, what other wrestlers are going to be there? Because sometimes that's how my head thinks. And I just saw it, and it was like all these real people. And I think it's like something like hippies meet Tony Robbins type stuff. I think. I don't know. I'll give you a whole explanation next week. Obviously, you saw I tagged on some comedy shows that we're doing in Newport and Cardiff. But it's these things in the mountains of Wales where uh, inspirational people go to meet other inspirational people and I'm uh I don't know I'm one of the, the speakers I don't have a speech and they were like don't have a speech just tell your story and I was like you're gonna fly me to Wales to do that great I'm gonna do it sometimes I don't know a friend could invite me out and I could have some kind of social anxiety and I'm like Ugh, I don't I don't know if I want to go do it and I don't And I get in my head, and uh, I don't know, right? We all have these problems. Maybe not. A lot of us probably do, though. And uh, it's like a friend invited me 
on an eight hour plane trip and then a four hour drive. And I was like, hey, take advantage of this. And so uh, and so I am. And that's where I'm headed. And I think that's a, a it's a good one to have Matt Cross on in the spirit of just go and do something, because you'll hear how he just goes and does stuff just because we have right. We have one life. Just go and do it. So uh, that's what Matt always does. That's what I'm doing. And hopefully it's a fun experience, and I'll tell you all about it next week. We will get to Matt, but we do have a song of the week before we get there, and we do have a sponsor for this week's song of the week, and it is Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh, how are you? I'm doing fine, thank you very much. These guys are on a mission to save home cooking. They're farm to box, couch to kitchen, and fork to feel good. They're fre- that's I said that very cheesy, but it's real. It's fork to feel good. They're fresh, they're convenient, and they're delicious. Here are the options you could choose from: a classic box, a veggie box, and a fan. Family box, three to five meals per week designed for either two or four people. New recipes each week. HelloFresh is the meal kit delivery space that makes cooking more fun so you can focus on the whole experience. Step-by-step instructions that won't take you more than 30 minutes and so easy. Anyone could do it. The meals are dropped in your doorstep in a recyclable insulated box for free. Shipping is free. HelloFresh is now offering light summertime meals and they just introduced a breakfast option. Pretty great. Cool part it's less than ten dollars a meal hello fresh they sent me a box and it's not the cooking that i don't have time for i do have time for the cooking it's either the time to go to the grocery store or my laziness that won't let me go to the grocery store one of them so for me this is great and i felt like a mini rachel ray just whipping up these fine cuisines in my tiny little apartment they're delicious ingredients you'll love to eat simple recipes you'll love to cook let's get cooking for 30 bucks off your first week of deliveries go to hellofresh.com enter the code cold 30 that's colt 30 at hellofresh.com and start cooking from home song of the week is a brighton based singer songwriter bad mother folker i feel he would fit right in at the do lectures in these mountains that i'm going to check him out on twitter at bad mother folker and listen to his other fun anti-folk songs at soundcloud.com slash bad mother folker it's very distinct the one that we did yeah, the first one that we did mm-hmm. five years ago, maybe six now. Yeah, yeah, it probably was six years ago. I want to say two thousand nine. Is that the thing? Yeah. Two thousand ten. Okay. Yeah, because that's when I started it, so it was probably September. I I want to say was it for Ethan Page? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. God, it's so weird because all I remember was Luke Harper on that show. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It was a Toronto show. Mm-hmm. It might have been for Ethan Page, and I now I, I have such a weird, a, a better. I, well, I have a real relationship with him now. <laughs> right. Oh, and Bushwhacker was on the show. Remember that? I don't even. You don't remember? Bush- oh, yeah, Bushwhacker Luke was on the show. Anyways, and then there was a guy in the back, and you said like this setup was fancy now. Back then, it wasn't that fancy. Yeah. There was a guy interrupting our whole podcast. <laughs> Very old, having yeah. a full conversation with us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and so now we finally get to do another one. That's right. Now you got this really fancy setup, so yeah. no one's going to interrupt. Not, well, you never know. The housekeeping, <laughs> they're, they're nuts here. Um, yeah. And that's kind of... So one thing I could touch on is I almost feel bad for Bushwhacker Luke, not in this way, but so even since then, it's kind of... It's been this... Well, we could both touch on this stuff. Not this revolution of independent wrestling, mm-hmm. but that might have been the tail end of like Ethan Page was like, "Well, we need to bring people in, so we'll br- we need to get draw people, right. so we'll get Bushwhacker Luke. He's the big draw, <laughs> sure." And those days are slowly kind of dying, right? In a way, I mean, I think you're always going to have like Scott Hall and and X Pac and some of these guys that will forever be kind of draws in our world. Don't fucking... This is my theory, and it's a good... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but luckily for guys like us, like some of that is sort of dying out. Because, okay, to your point, like, what's the last cool thing those dudes did? It was like 15 to 20 years ago, yeah. and they're still making a living off it. Right. And it's like, I'd like to, you know, do something cool also. Or like, I'm actively doing something cool all the time. So yeah. it is nice that that's sort of being acknowledged a little bit by... Yeah. Yeah, that was well. That was the generation that would be the draws when we started, right? Yeah. Honky Tonk Man, Bushwhacker Luke, yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Tito, who were on the shows around you that were like, Don't was know. it whoever was JT was bringing in? Yeah, we had like uh, the Stro, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Buff Bagwell, um, 
Jerry Lynn, but he was cool. Um, yeah, so the same same guys, you know. Yeah, right, and the same guys. <laughs> so I don't know who like the new draws would be. I guess like Carlito and Chris Masters. Those are my like, yeah. go to guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. But anyways, so now I don't know. I feel who like I, I did. Have you done Sammy Callahan stuff? Uh, yeah, yeah. Which one did you do? The person in Des Moines. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. We did a back to back thing. He was telling me. Like the first show he did, he's like, "Okay, we're in Iowa. We're gonna bring in all these like old school names." Mm-hmm. And then the next show, he brought like all these indie names, and it way outdrew really? everybody. That's amazing. Yeah, I thought it was like I don't know if that was like an eye opener, and I don't know. I've had that stamp stance before, but just that like indie names are now kind of names. Yeah, I so. mean it's changing, and new people are getting into wrestling. So if you're getting into wrestling now, then you don't know those names mm. of of the past. And I think things like. Lucha Underground and stuff like that is making wrestling cool again. Everything we're all doing is making wrestling cool again. So then it's bringing in new people who don't know those names, and they know the names of today. Yeah, and are those guys pissed? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. I wonder what, like, Honky Tonk Man's, like, is he like, I gotta reinvent myself? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember doing some AAW show where he was at, I want to say. Does that make sense? Would he be there? Um, yeah, probably because there was a Comic Con maybe in Chicago. That's what I'm thinking. Okay, because as I say it, I'm like, no, he's not. There. Right, right. They're like well, tearing it up nowadays. Why would he be there? But I'd never met him, and he was over there. I don't know, talking about something, and uh, he's like, oh, what do you think we're gonna go for this or this is blah blah blah. And for whatever reason, I was like, I don't know, Ronky Bonk man, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I bought myself so big. He just went with it. But I'm like, why did I just call this dude the Ronky Bunk? Man? <laughs> so, yeah. Fred, he deserves it. <laughs> hmm, the Ronky Bunk, man. <laughs> there he is. I hope someone makes fan art of Ronky, Ronky Bunk. <laughs> I mean, no disrespect, but, you know. Well, no, none, none given or <laughs> taken. Um, yeah, so... Uh, that's kind of the story is that we're these, uh, independent pine, I don't want to say, uh, what would the, what would the punk rock term be? Uh, independent dudes that are just doing it. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like veterans doesn't sound right either, you know? Cause it's like, it almost carries with that, that stigma of like the veterans when we started, we're like the, I'm going to beat you up guy. Yeah. And like you and I are of that age and experience where that would be our role if we chose it. But like, that doesn't really exist nowadays. Like guys aren't like. When I wrestle some guy, even if he's awful, I'm not like, well, that's it. Time to beat you up. Like, also, do you remember, like, like I like to think that we are still, like, exuberant in youth. Yes. Like, maybe you have some gray hair. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. And I, I don't know what my older traits would be. I, my <laughs> face is sagging. I don't know. Like, but, right, well, like, I don't know. I just turned 37. Yeah. And so when I was 19, and we were both 19 in locker rooms, right? Right. A 37-year-old... Like, a 32-year-old was an old fucking man. Isn't it strange? When I read something, it puts a spin on it. Like, I read that someone was actually shot last night in Cleveland. But when I was like, 34-year-old man was shot in Cleveland. And in my head, I'm like, what's that old guy doing out so late? It's his fault. You know? And then I'm like, holy crap. Like, if, if I see it in writing, I'm like, whoa. Because to your point, like, we act so young. Yeah. I don't know if that's for better or worse. But, like, I, I like to think it's good. But it's like, yeah, this is like... um maybe immaturity, but in a, in a positive way, because yeah, like we, we aren't, we don't act our age and, and, and we don't move our age. I don't think either. Like mm. I'm, I'm still going hard like every weekend. And it's like all those guys are like, yeah, let's see if you can keep that up for another year or two. And it's like, it's been 17, dude. I'm yeah. still killing it. Like <laughs> maybe I die tonight, whatever. But like, you can't even, it's been forever. Right. And I've still, every move I started doing in pro wrestling, I can still do. And I still do do. So it's like, you said do do. <laughs> I still do 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 do. It's all there, so so that kind of stuff makes me chuckle as well. But I will say that I wrestled uh, Leo Rush this past weekend okay. uh, for Fest Wrestling in Gainesville, and that dude's like I think twelve now or something <laughs> like that. His permits was next year, <laughs> and I, we were like at this one point just both laying down, whatever, deep into the match, and I, and I remember literally being conscious of the fact and saying in my own head. This dude's like 20. <laughs> like When I started doing this for money in front of paying crowds, he was like three or four oh. or maybe five. So I don't know anything about kids. So I just imagine a five-year-old like crying or something. Yeah. So Leo Rush is just like, eh, wah, I want a bottle. And I'm like getting screwed out of money or something at a wrestling show. Right. And I was just like, this is crazy. you yeah. know? Because then there was those moments of like, 
I know this hurts me more than it hurts him. <laughs> like, I know it. Like, every time he hits me, I'm like, yep, that hurts. And you know he's just like, yeah, give it to me. I want more. Like, when you're young and you like getting beat up. And now I'm like, yeah, I mean, maybe don't hit me as hard as you can, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. we're. Uh, and then do you think about when he's your age now, what you're going to be doing? Oh, uh, intentionally, no. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Sometimes I have those thoughts. I'm uh, like, I'll, Fuck. I'll go in and out of it. I, I almost consciously don't try to think that way. Uh, and it's easy not to in the mm. position that we're in. So like I'll start to go there mentally and I'm like, oh man, where am I going to be in two years or five years or 10 years? And then I'm like, I need to wrestle today, tomorrow, the next day. Then we're doing a movie. Then I got this. And so it's like, it's so easy to put that stuff off. Luckily that, uh, I just consciously put it off. Man, I do you look? I do. I'll compare myself, and it's kind of weird. I mean, Christopher Daniels is always a guy I compared myself to, but like he's like, for, like I'm just like, fuck. I don't know if anyone will want to book me when I'm like in my 40s, right? And then like Christopher Daniels is like the champion at 46, yeah, there you and go, and still like wrestles the way that he did at 26, right? Um, so who knows? Uh, but same then thing I, with- I I do worry about like just being like, I guess, right? Like not an old dude, but like. A 45-year-old, or even at 37, it's kind of sad, like, pretending playing wrestling. <laughs> like, I, don't, I know what you're saying. I don't think we're there yet. Yeah. Um, like you said, hey, uh, how old's Jericho? He's like 45 or right. as well, and he still goes so mm-hmm. hard. So it's like, there are these guys that sort of show that it can be done. And I think generationally, like, you and I, like, take care of ourselves better than, like, the previous generation. Yeah, but there was, like, a, it was, like, on the news, and there was, like, a 50-year-old dude, who I'm not going to say his name because I don't like him, but he was, like, I'm the cha- I'm the wrestling, he was, like, it was, like, an ind- for an independent show. Right. He's, like, I'm the wrestling champion. I'm, like, you're a 50-year-old, like, <laughs> with a fake belt. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I'm just, like, that's going to be me, though, I think. Well. Yeah. Well, I'm just putting it on you. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, fair I still enough. feel okay now. I know what you're saying, mm. obviously. I, like, I have white hair and I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Mm. You know, like, that's what, that's what I feel like this world is. I'm like, I'll tell people that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And it's like, dude, you're like a man. <laughs> like, <laughs> you should have figured that stuff out like 20 odd years ago, if not more. Well, you, you discovered you're a brand manager now yeah. with wrestling is True. forever. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, I, uh, I broke my leg, uh, first show of the year, so had to do something. How many injuries have you had like that? I've been pretty lucky. The last serious thing I did, uh, I tore my groin really severely. It even pulled a piece of my pelvis off with it, and that was 2007. So that was 10 years ago, and I was out for like two or three months. So How do you fix that? Uh, well... Do you put um, a caster on your... <laughs> yeah. Uh, what I did, um, and this is, I think, the recommended uh, route, is I did nothing, and then just waited... <laughs> Until it sort of felt better months and months later, which is what I also tried to do with my recently broken leg. Uh, I broke it my first show of the year, January 13th. And then on February 8th, I went to the hospital because it was really, really hurting still. Um, And the doctor got the x-ray, assuming I had just done this, because normally when people break bones, they go to the hospital. Uh, And the x-ray showed a lot of healing at this point because it's nearly a month. So he comes in the room with this x-ray and he's just like, Dude, when did you do this? Like, what is going on? I'm like, oh, January 13th. And he's like, okay. Oh, so nearly a month ago. Oh, he's like, is this the first time you've come in? I was like, yeah. He's like, all right. Okay, well. He's like, I was going to say, this shows a lot of healing. And I was wondering, like, I wanted to come in here and see you face to face. Because I'm like, who just came in here? It's like legit Wolverine or something. Like, how did this dude heal a month's worth like yeah. overnight? What if like, you said it happened last night? I should have actually. Yeah, I should have awesome. went with it. Yeah, I went back. Wait, my... so you broke it? Yeah, broke my leg. And then for a month, you just walked around and wrestled? I didn't wrestle. I oh. canceled all my shows. But I went to the gym every day. Uh, didn't, didn't do legs, but uh, I was there every day limping What around. if it needed setting? Uh, then I Is that a thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It didn't, luckily. Uh, then I would have been very, um, what's the word? Uh, screwed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would have been in trouble. Uh, How luckily, did you not? It shows my lack of anatomy knowledge. Uh, turns out there's two bones in your leg, and uh, apparently you can break one and uh, be sort of Okay-ish. I guess they just put you in a cast, right? Yeah. So you made your own cast? Well, I missed that stage, so I never got a cast or anything. I could picture you just being like, just wrapping toilet paper around it and (laughs) molt and wetting it. Isn't that how it's done? I Something like that. But in your head, you weren't like, uh, well, I know I need a cast. I mean, I know this is broken. Or you were like, "Ah, I think it's strained. I thought, and this sounds so ridiculous only in retrospect, knowing that it was broken. (laughs) I thought it was 
a muscle bruise. Mm. Uh, so I felt so lame canceling shows, being like, guys, I just, I have an ouchie on my leg, you know? Like, and even I'm hanging out with my buddies every day, and I'm like, guys, I hate to keep complaining about it, but I mean, this thing, I mean, it kills. You guys ever had a deep muscle bruise? And, and that's the thing, it never turned black and blue, it was never like swollen or anything. So I wasn't ignoring these obvious signs. Mm. I went to two different chiropractors. I went to my cousin who's to a, crack. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> to crack it in place and or like, eh, he's a doctor enough. I, th- yeah, that was my thought process <laughs> is he will know more than I will. And I'm like, you know, do you think this is if this is certainly not broken? Right. And they had these like old timey uh, remedies where they put a tuning fork on it. And then hit the tuning fork, and apparently that'll just shoot like insane pain through your body. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're like, get ready for it. And uh, if it's broken, you know, it'll kind of send those vibrations through and cause pain. It was fine. Uh, so just do you think is your tolerance of pain? Mm, I I don't know. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I don't want to be like I'm the toughest dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I broke my leg and hung around for a month, but I don't think I'm any tougher than like any other wrestler. Like, I think all of us are inherently... Well, I mean, yeah, all, I meant all of us, I think, have a high tolerance of pain. Yeah. I'd like to think. Yeah, we're just... I think Jericho talked about it in his book, how we have to become, like, amateur doctors, almost. <laughs> all right. Right? I think he mentioned that, because, like, you, kn- uh, you know... You could stop with the Jericho references on this podcast, please. Thank you very much. Oh, I didn't know if... I- <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, guess who my favorite wrestler is? Um, uh, I think Stone Cold Jim Ross and Bruce Pritchard also <laughs> once said... <laughs> uh, like, you know, more than anyone, like... If we went to the hospital every time we were hurt, right. we just live at the hospital. Like, you can't go as a professional wrestler every time you're hurt. So you got to get really good at determining, like, well, am I hurt, hurt, or am I just, like, hurt? Or Yeah, I call it, like, a, I don't call it anything because I forgot what I would say, but it's, like, uh, it ha- I, I rolled both of my ankles, and, mm-hmm. like, right when it happened, I was, like, right as it happened, I go, ah, that's a two-monther, <laughs> or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, uh, but then, like, this is weird because I, I talked about it in the podcast a little bit, but like I rolled it and then like I was like as it happened I go that's a two monther and then all of a sudden I kind of walked it off and I was like ooh okay that's a five dayer I'm, I'll be good for next weekend you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and we yeah and like and what happened was I got this massage chair because sometimes what will happen is like you'll get these knots in your back and you know this and you know they'll be done like if it, you're fucked on Sunday you're like okay this will be fine by Friday but I found like I can. Uh, expedite it by right. this massage chair yeah. and just roll like I'll sit on it for three hours and roll it on my back and then it'll be fixed the next day I've never been like super recovery man man mm. so when I broke my leg assuming that I, I again I assumed it was just a, a soft tissue injury of some sort so <laughs> I was like elevating it icing it uh I got acupuncture for the first time. Like I was doing all these things. Everything except going to the doctor. Well, right. <laughs> right. That's yeah. Yeah. Literally everything. Uh and then I remember thinking, like, why is it not getting any better? And I was doing all these different procedures, and they're like, how's it feel now? Is it 10% better? And I'm like, well, to be honest, it still kills. Because mm. <laughs> like, obviously nothing's going to just, you know, cure a broken leg. But, um, yeah, I was trying to be uh, stay on top of things as far as the rehab or whatever. And, uh, yeah, turns out it was broken. So you were out for a long time, you, and you started wrestling as forever? Yeah, yeah. It was an idea I was been kicking around for about nine months before that. Uh, but this gave me like the last bit of motivation and then the time to just, to just do it. I was sitting at home and really, uh, people reached out to me and I remember the first guy in particular that said like, like, what's your PayPal? I want to send you money. Mm. And I just thought like I was touched and then I don't know, no one owes me anything. Like we wear underpants and we, we run around and then like people get hurt every day around the world. And it's like, people don't write them and be like. Do you want money? So I just felt like this, like, I don't know, tinge of guilt or something. A- and it was so nice. And it was it was very, very, very helpful. I mean, my hospital bills for them doing nothing, no cast, no anything was like near two grand. So that really helped me, you know, kind of cover that. And there's obviously the physical stuff, but then there's the mental aspect of like, oh, I'm out. And it just it's really, you know, difficult. So it helped kind of alleviate. No insurance? Of, uh, no insurance. Oh, Old 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 gray, old gray hair doesn't think to get injured. No, I had it, but it went up to four hundred dollars a month, and then yeah, that was just, mine's pretty high. Too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It just wasn't uh, wasn't feasible. And then I had a previous injury, and because I had health insurance, I couldn't apply for the financial aid, and that's when I got rid of it. Mm. So I'm like, you mean to tell me if I didn't have health insurance, I could have applied for <laughs> financial assistance? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, and insurance is done. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean that that helped a lot with the, the mental anxiety that that were with the injury. So I just felt like. Man, 
people just want to offer me money for nothing. Like, let me bring something into the world. Like, uh, let me produce something and, and let me get something out there. And just, you know, this world is so crazy. And so many of our friends are now like millionaires and TV stars <laughs> yeah. and, and, and everything. And it's like, we've been like you and I in particular have been like woven into that fabric of independent pro wrestling for 17, 18 years. And we, not that we take it for granted, but it's just, it's really insane how close to that center we are. And I just wanted like to create something tangible that like captures that, if that makes sense. And, and people just, it's to the center of the, and let me stop you. Cause I, mm-hmm. I think about this a lot. The center of the idea of like how independent wrestling is a thing. Is that what you mean? And like, we're like in the middle of like yeah, yeah i mean yeah, all yeah. these people they didn't because su- i guess we have the most years in this probably pretty much successfully right <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and yeah it's like these people didn't succeed because of us and they didn't come through us and they'd be where they are independent of us but it's still cool to see them that that we were there during their journeys and seeing them i remember doing some show in england and, and getting there with uh, daniel bryan and we were really tired and i wanted to eat some tuna fish so as i ate tuna fish he headed into this bedroom and there was one small bed. I assumed he would take the bed, obviously. He was had seniority over me and everything. And then when I got in the room uh, after finishing my tuna fish, he had set up shop on the ground and left the bed for me. And it's like, holy crap. So just to see... I and mean, there's a guy that, what, two years later was, like, ruling the wrestling world. And there he was, like, sleeping on a floor. And just all of that that little stuff just, like, adds up in my mind. And, and I just... I don't know. It's like... There's so much like passion involved in this business that I don't see. I came from competitive gymnastics and, and I've been around other disciplines and there's passion all everywhere, but like wrestling, it's like borders on this like insanity and, 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 and weirdness. And like, you know, it's like the, the, the sacrifices that we make for like something that's inherently so silly is mm-hmm. just touching. So I wanted to just, I wanted to put something out in the world that captured that. Like, yes, it's on a t-shirt or a hoodie or a hat, but that's not what it is. It's more of that. It's an idea. And, and I wanted to just capture that. And, and there's something to be said for like me with a broken leg going to the post office every day and like sending out the stuff personally. And, and that's just like the punk rock in me. You know, it's like, that's, that's all it is. It's like, there's, I can, I'm very busy, but I'm not so busy that I can't go to the post office. Right. And, yeah. And, people always are blown away that like I package my own orders and I ship my yeah. own orders. And I'm always like, what, what else would I be doing? I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it gave me the strength, uh, as lame as that sounds, to, to kind of pursue it. Cause I was like, whoa, what if I get inundated with all these orders? And I'm like, I'm not going to be doing cabana level stuff. So if he can do it, right. I can do it. And you just do it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, I don't know. That's we're trying to make a living here. Yeah. And that's money that's come in and, and they've given you money and you wanna it's so weird how like um I don't know, like sorry for the pause. I uh there there was a there was a guy that like got on me and I didn't realize it. And maybe this is like where I realized like I don't know, it was like pre my WWE stuff and I like and I never sent him this guy this guy his order mm-hmm. and then post WWE stuff when I started like really going hard to the ground and like making sure I, it's like beforehand, like I didn't realize how important just like when you get that order, they're waiting on it. Like you yeah. have to fulfill stuff, oh, like being yeah, a, yeah. like be, almost being a good business or sure. a good person. I See, I'm in touch with that. Cause that again is like the punk rock stuff. Yeah. Like, I, I don't understand or I can't identify when people go to see, I don't know, you two or something. And they're like, I got good seats and like, I can see the band. Well, like I wouldn't go to a show If I don't inherent in me getting a ticket or sneaking in or whatever I do (laughs) inherent is that is the fact that I'm going to meet the band because the band themselves is going to sell me the crappy $20 t-shirt, which I'm only saying $20 to not bury us because our shirts are $20. Is that a punk show? It's either 10 or 15. (laughs) Even when I started selling my stuff, when I started wrestling, I would sell my shirts for 10 bucks and Mm -hmm. everyone got on me because they're like, I wasn't trying to undersell anybody. I just, that was the norm from the world that I'm in. So, you know, it, 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 the idea of shipping out the orders and stuff myself and everything is part of that, you know, like that's why punk bands, like they're just supposed to inspire. Like they're not good at music. They're just, they, they exist to tell you, you can do this. <laughs> so I feel like that same level of, there was some lady that came up to me in, in Texas. I did a show in Dallas this past weekend. And she was like shaking just to meet me. And it's like, no, we're all just people, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's that idea that we're all people. And like you and I work very, very hard towards something. So maybe, I mean, I eat every two and a half hours and I go to the gym every day and blah, blah, blah. So maybe people can't relate with that aspect, but they can relate with that. 
I'm just, I'm just a person. I just took some initiative and like, maybe I'm disciplined or I have goals and I'm, you know, oriented toward that, but like, I'm just a person and you're just a what person. Mm, is there a better word for that? It's on your license plate. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm a dude. <laughs> Man, I've had that license plate for like 10 years. <laughs> it's so, yeah. For those that don't know, my license plate says dudes. Not dude, because dude, I feel, would be like, oh, dude, oh, I think I'm cool. No, no, no. Dudes, which is like intentionally and weirdly ambiguous, because it's like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I'm always driving through uh, Lakewood, Ohio, which has like, I think, second to San Francisco, the highest population of like homosexuals I in the know that. country. Yeah, and that's where my family lives and everything. So I'm cruising around Lakewood with my dude's license plate with a carload of dudes and like, <laughs> it's basically a free pass into Canada because when you go up there and they check your license plate, like you're not going to be running drugs or smuggling something if you're like calling that much attention. To yeah, yourself. fair enough. <laughs> and then I roll up and they're like, "Where are the chicks at?" I'm like, "Only know about the dudes, man." And you just kind of <laughs> and you high five right through customs. <laughs> I remember my dad when it showed up at the house because uh, <laughs> you can do it online, and that's why I did it. Yeah. It was like oldplates.com and it's like click here to check uh, license plate availability, and I'm like, okay. And the first one I put in was diapers. And then it said, this is like inappropriate. I'm like, how is it inappropriate? Like, what if I had a diaper business? Mm. Like, so the next thing I'm like, "Ah, whatever, dudes. And it's like, okay, click here if you want it. I'm like, okay, click. And it's like, okay, we're shipping this to you. I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, no way in real life. And that was like 10 years ago. So just like the little smiles I see at red lights, I look in my rear view mirror and there's someone inevitably like taking a picture of it and stuff. Like it makes, it brings a smile to my face, you know, every day. So nice. that's what it's all about. That's, and that's what you are. Yeah. We're just, yeah, dude. Or that's what we are. Yeah. Collectively. 100%, yeah. <laughs> you. For sure. Um, let's talk about your journeys. Yeah, man. You just said you went on a long one. I, your Instagram is wonderful to follow just for the, thank you for the sake of seeing where you're at next. Yeah. It's almost a lot of pressure now. Like, oh, I got to get to Bulgaria (laughs) or my fans won't believe that I really do this. It is funny that there's not a way of capturing the fact that all the countries that I've been to at this point, uh, and it's how many? 25. um, I've been to all of them like multiple times. So this was like my third time to Qatar, my fourth time to Switzerland, my, you know, who knows, 15th time to Germany. So I wish there was almost like this running tally of Mm. like 25 sounds insane, but doesn't even truly capture like the real like magnitude I, I, I like i think like when i say it now like i i think i've probably been to england 50 times yeah right which is insane yeah <laughs> like people hope to go once in their life yeah you know like and, and we get to do this stuff regularly so yeah i was gone for 33 days uh seven countries um and yeah it was incredible and what are you doing you're just setting that i mean i know see you're you're different than me where like I feel you keep these relationships that I don't, and I probably should. Uh, like, right? You, and you make friends, and then just stay with them, the promoters and that kind of stuff. Or? Yeah, yeah. Which again, I think is the punk rock in me. So yeah, like, and you sort it out, or like, or in your head, are you like, I wonder if they care if I stay at this guy's house for seven days, or? Oh, I'll be invited and stuff. Like, okay. uh, I did SWE in Switzerland, and Stefan, the owner, was was upset when I showed up. That was like one of my first stops on this tour. And he thought I would be staying there the whole time and kind of going other places, coming back, going somewhere mm. else, coming back. And then when I told him that, like, I wasn't and I was just doing, like, a week in every country, essentially, he was almost, like, heartbroken. And he's like, but we've sorted a gym for you and you could you could have my car. And I mean, which I thought was beyond, like, I can use your car. I'm not going to cruise around Switzerland, man, in your, like, sweet car. Like, that's, like, almost too much pressure. But, um yeah, again, I have to keep going back to it, but like that's the punk rock in it. Like my friends didn't play instruments, so for me, for me, professional wrestling is my journey through punk rock. Like I'm a one man band, and I'm out there on the road, and this is my way of staying on somebody's couch or spare bedroom and and selling my own merch like directly to you. And and it, you know, it's not just about making money and just about like it. It is cultivating those relationships and and seeing the world. Like I I'm, I'm so grateful for what I get to do and so conscious of it because. Like I just said, for, you've been to England 50 times. Like <laughs> people hope, hope, and they save up and they plan for a year to go once in their life. And then for the rest of their life, they're like, remember they that about? one yeah, time yeah. we did that one thing. Now, I have a really bad memory, so I don't know if that comes into play because it's good and it's bad. It's bad for obvious reasons. I can't remember anything. The good thing of it <laughs> is that because I can't remember everything, I need this constant influx of awesome. Because if, if the awesome meter goes down, I don't remember. I can't 
man, 10 years ago I went to England and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. It doesn't exist in my brain. Like I'm loosely aware that I went, but I don't remember. So every day I'm like, more fun, more fun, my form of need, 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 go, 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 go. Like, so I'm just driven to like do more things and go more places. And, and yeah, I, I, it is part of like just staying there. And then you get to, even if you were the richest doctor in the world, could you get the time off to do these things? And if you did, where would you stay? Some kind of all-inclusive resort or some kind of nice hotel. You still wouldn't get the... I like staying with people because then when Stefan goes to the store... You feel like... Guess where I'm going? The yeah. store. You know, like, and, it's, and it's the real store that they go to and you do what they do and you get a real sense of these places. So, yeah, having done all the travel, it's, it's not just like token travel of like, I went there, you know, check it off. It's like you really... You, you lived there, sort mm-hmm. of. And, and I just... I don't know. That that's what the world's so big and there's so much to do and see and But like, also with wrestling too. Like I went to Costa Rica. Yeah. And we wrestled <laughs> I'm just saying we we wrestled in like I mean, we weren't on the nice part. So like these these places where we wrestle too. Yeah. You know, like even if you're a doctor and I totally agree with what you're saying. I've I've never I mean, I've kind of thought about it, but then like when I did the show in Costa Rica in a garage, <laughs> right. you know, like yeah. and like there were no roads that like the roads weren't real. They were just paths yeah. that kind of zigs and zagged. And I was like, well, no one's coming here. And then you show up and there's like whatever, how many of her hundreds of like diehard wrestling fans. And they, they know how to Google map, turn left at a rock and right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, it works. For them. Giant rock. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I think also, you know, n- not just like the idea of being a wrestler and meeting these connections, the same things, but, but also when you wrestle, yeah, we go into, and I think just like in America, how, it's not like New York City and Chicago. It's like LaSalle, Illinois, yeah, and yeah. whatever it is, you know, Marietta, Ohio, or sure. whatever wrestling, right? Remix Pro. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> but, but, but those, we go to the weird places yeah. um, in America and all over the world. And I always find it weird when it's like, Billy Guns in my town? Yeah. You know, like yeah, yeah. he used to do giant arenas, and now it's just like, what's he doing here? And, What's another small? <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> enough, and this ties in, I wrestled him at this really small Canadian fed that did like, it was their first and only show type deal. And it was me and Billy Gunn in the main event. And I remember there's like no one really there. And the promoter had no idea what's going on. And like to Billy Gunn, before the show starts, he's like, hey man, just go out there and like, I don't know, talk to people. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if that was me and who am I? I'd be like, I don't know, man. That's kind of awkward. Billy Gunn is just like, Sure. Like hops out through the curtain is just like personally like walking around to the chairs, like meeting everybody. I was like, what a guy. Like <laughs> it was amazing. I was just like, man, someone of that like stature or whatever, like shouldn't be nearly as cool. And then I think we got screwed in money and he was just like, I'm not even gonna let it bring me down. Like I, I was like, what? A, and we had this awesome match and yeah, he was, he was amazing. So yeah, all the different weird <laughs> situations. Shout out to Billy Gunn. <laughs> um, and then what are the other, what, what's Qatar like? That's one I've been trying to jump on. Yeah, right. this is the uh, third time I've been there. Um, Middle East, yeah. just a dude with a lot of money? Uh, he's a banker, um, and he puts on these like sort of yearly shows, and, and they're mega shows. So we had you know Rey Mysterio and John Morrison, Alberto Del Rio. I mean, just like you name it, right? I don't know how I squeak on, but I'm grateful that I'm there. Um, and, and we're in five-star hotels, and the meals are you know taken care of, and it's just, it's it's awesome. Um it's funny because before I left, people are always like, oh, be careful. And even about Europe, they're like, be careful. And it's like, of of what? Like, quit being so scared of everything. Right. And especially the Middle East. I think Qatar is one of the safest countries in the world. Yeah, and my vision of that isn't scary. No, It's just not like at rich all. sheiks and shit. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> and you show up, everything, they, they completed whatever pipelines I needed to complete like 10 to 15 years ago. So everything has been built because all the money started flooding in in the 10 to 15 years. So there's just... Every building is new. It looks like what I would imagine Gotham City to be. Like, everything's retrofitted with lights and just fancy, and, and the architecture's amazing. Uh, it's hot. <laughs> um, but it's great. Uh, yeah, QPW, and, and hopefully they keep doing it. Um, but you don't get the experience of the locals there, do you? No, we do, because we went to the, the Souk Wakif, which is like the giant uh, marketplace, and, and it's great. You're walking around. I, ugh, no disrespect. I don't know what the... Everyone's wearing the, the gimmicks. I don't know what they're called. So but, much uh, disrespect to me. Yeah. <laughs> I you, am... you, you feel like you're in a movie, and you're just like, this is great, and you're, you're doing it, and you're seeing like... You're just on the, you know, halfway across the world where these places you'll, you'll never be and you wouldn't have heard about. And, but everyone treats us really nice. Um, it's like Rich Sheik invited some of us to his house. So about 10 of us. It was like, uh, yeah. And um, we showed up. I thought legit it was a hotel because uh, we were like in his main room. And I'm like, this is 
a lobby, clearly. Like, it was so big that I don't even know if I'd want to live there. Because <laughs> uh, it, it just felt, you felt so small. I was like, this isn't very homey or comfortable. Um, maybe I'm just saying that because I'll never live somewhere like that. Uh, but we got the tour of this 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 mansion. Uh, and then, of course, we go to the backyard. And for his kids, you know, they have a wrestling ring. So here we are in the Middle East, a full-size wrestling ring. Um, and just like Rey Mysterio's eyes light up. And he's just like, oh, man, I got to get in this thing. And I'm really? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it wasn't like just, just to get in it. But And then here's this guy's kids and stuff. And I'm like, this is a, what a, what a moment for them. At some point, they got their dad to buy them a ring because they obviously like wrestling. And now... Like the real life action figure, Rey Mysterio, the actual dude, like comes over your house and gets in your ring. And like, so that, that was a surreal, awesome moment. And then we sat down for dinner and he happened to sit next to me. And it was just, you know, you're doing something right when he's just like, man, I've been following your Instagram. You've been all over. Like, where are you off to next? And I'm telling him about like HCW and Budapest. And like, I was like, this is the greatest moment ever. Like, so yeah, it was just it was it was really cool, dude. Then I'm doing this place AIW in Cleveland. You wouldn't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> it's on. The he's like, oh my god, that sounds so cool. <laughs> it's in a church, a broken down church. Yeah, in a, in amazing. A, not the best part of Cleveland. Sweet. <laughs> it's growing. No. Yeah. Is that I mean, place all right? Oh yeah, AIW is doing well. No, I mean, I mean uh, that that area. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, maybe not. It's not as bad as it used to be. I mean, Turner's Hall, where I trained, where we used to that do That was the bad place. That was not so good. Yeah. And I always felt bad because people, you know, wrestlers come in for the show and then leave. So I'm like, this is what these people think of Cleveland, Ohio. Like, I've right. been so many places where it's like, Binghamton, New York. Like, I go to that one building and I leave that one building. So if that came up in a sentence, I'd be like, I've been there. And I would have some form of an opinion on it. But... It would be so misinformed if based on one rundown building, and I'd be like, mm, "Seems kind of rundown." Yeah. Based on a building, and apparently it's... every school is abandoned, and they put <laughs> wrestling rings. <laughs> right. Kind of dusty. They should clean it up. <laughs> but yeah, you know how it is. It's like you you, you judge the places on like this limited kind of mm. interaction with them. Uh, and then let's, as we finish it off, um, a TV experience, which is now, it's got to be uh, what's the word for you? Something with Lucha Underground. Yeah, but. You know, I remember we talked about doing another one and you would come off of Tough Enough. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there was a, a fun chip on your shoulder, <laughs> uh, you know, in a good way, like mm -hmm. a little kind of a little like what the fuck. And then like afterwards, like Austin realizes who you were after he like kicked you off of TV. And then he's like, <laughs> oh, fuck. And like maybe you <laughs> fucked up, you know, but I think I think just from being around you, I think that's kind of gone now. And you correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, or is it there still lies on you a little bit? Um, and then the satisfaction of then getting on being a part of Lucha Underground and becoming a star and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I wish I didn't do Tough Enough. You do wish that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I shouldn't have answered that phone call. Uh, I'd rather people don't know me at all than have a false interpretation of, of who I am. Mm. Uh, because, please, geez, not to bring in... Like, as you can see, like the, the current political climate and everything, once people have an opinion of you, they hold that near and dear. See, they, I, like, to me, it's like I think people forget about everything after four years. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? So, like, in my head, it's like, I don't, and I'm bringing it up, but, like, probably me bringing it up, everyone's like, oh, yeah, fuck, I forgot about that. And That's I'm sorry true. if I brought it up and people remember about it. Right, right. But it's right. part, I mean, this, no, yeah, we talk about this in a fun way that it's not like. Sure. Yeah. Um, but just, like, when it comes to, I don't know, like, Marty Skrull was on, like, British boot camp two as party Marty. And now he's like right. killing it. And no one remembers that. And he's in the super juniors. And that is true. Yeah. I said that. I was like, was he? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, good point. Yeah. But that's, it's interesting that you do, you look back on it. You know, we talk about regrets in wrestling or stuff that we wish we, you know, and you're like, Oh, wish I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I just don't want it to be part of my story. Cause it was, it did me such a disservice. Mm. I mean, you could go back and re-edit that same footage that they captured and I'd have my own show on the network right now. <laughs> yeah. I believe that wholeheartedly. So like, on a you know dusty VHS tape or whatever high eight tape somewhere is like gold, and then they edited all that out. I mean, like just to give a slight snippet, like I jumped in a fire when we were there, and like I was on fire. And it's like <laughs> I thought for sure in my limited TV knowledge they'll likely air this part where I catch myself on fire, but that wasn't part of their story, so right. they didn't. And that's just what was upsetting because it's like just let what happens happen, but that's not the genre. But the funny part is if you rewatch it and you watch the credits, the executive producer was a guy named Eric Van Wagner. If you now watch Lucha Underground and you watch the credits, the executive producer is a guy named Eric Van Wagner. Get out of here. I didn't know that. No one does. A very limited amount yeah. of people do. So he was hired by the WWE to make a wrestling show. 
And then he was hired by Mark Burnett to now make a different wrestling show. So that's what he does, is makes, makes television shows. Have you guys ever had that conversation? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because he did my exit interview. And my exit interview, uh, in an attempt to make me cry, they were saying things like, well, now your dream is crushed and you'll never succeed. Like, what now? Uh, and I remember, like, I probably would have cried if they would have just put the camera on me and been like, what happened? But because they were pushing those buttons so hard of like, your life is now over. What are you going to do? I'm I, I keep on wrestling. I, it made me mad on the inside. So I was so furious. I remember saying things like, wait a minute. Uh, look for me in a town near you this weekend, and I'm going to wrestle in 25 countries. So when I wrestled in the Netherlands last month as part of that tour, and I hit 25, that was an awesome moment for me and a milestone, because I'm like, bam, I, I don't remember if they aired that or not, or if it was bonus footage on the website or whatever. But I remember thinking, like, I'm going to wrestle in 25 countries, and they, they can't stop me. And it's like, it's punk rock. Like, we're going to make our own world. Like, you, me, Joey Ryan, guys like that. This is a lifestyle, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and we're going we're gonna, to, no one can control us. And especially in this current climate where there's so many opportunities and so many everything. And it's like, again, I broke my leg. I'm like, well, I'm going to start wrestling this forever. Like, no one can take these opportunities away from us. And, and those of us that kind of see that opportunity or maybe are college educated or whatever, you don't need to be, but just look at it as, as a more big picture thing. We can see these opportunities and kind of hope to capitalize on them. And, and, yeah, so it, it was. It's been a been a crazy ride from the tough enough stuff. But um, so you and Eric with that conversation, like, yeah. was he like, um, oh, or I don't know, or I'm almost like not at liberty to say this stuff. But I, I, I'll wrap it up, or I'll, I'll just I'll suffice to say that. Oh, you could say just if it was positive or negative. I don't know. It it confirmed to me that tough enough was a television program. Sure. In, in the same way Lucha Underground is a television program. So yeah. Those things have been... Yeah, I just listened to some NPR show where they were talking about how they made real world and how, like... Sure. You know, they were, like, making... Like, the f- very first real world. Yeah. And then I listened... There was another thing, I think, on Facebook the other day of, like, there's this, like... I don't know, it's, like, real gangsters. Mm-hmm. And then this guy... It was, like... It was, like, 40 black gangster dudes mm-hmm. confronting this one, like, white dude. And that's not... I'm not paying any rate, but, like... They're all like, you edited us everything out. They're like yelling. It was like a producer guy, oh, right. and they're all like, "What the fuck, man? It just it 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 showed me just coming out of jail didn't show me fucking how I started two businesses and all this stuff. Like I don't know what the show was, but I was just like, fuck, man. You can just see how like yeah. people have control of just whatever, and like whoever has control is making control. And I guess it kicks back to you and I, and maybe that was your moment. You know, the same way it was for me when I got fired. There, it's just like we have to control our own destiny, and we can't like make anybody make our own rides for us. <laughs> the way that it was explained to me, this is before we even started filming. And at the time it was kind of in one ear out the other. Uh, and then only after the experience was I like, Holy crap, they gave it to me in a nutshell. Mm. Uh, one of the producers told me never again. Will we turn on a camera and see what happens? Too much money's at stake. You have this sound guy and this lighting guy. When you and I are having this conversation, for example, if this was on a reality TV show, there'd be 15 to 20 other people in this room getting the sound, getting the lights, getting the everything. Like, you know, we're in this huge thing. You're not, those people aren't going to stand there with the camera and be like, <laughs> maybe they're going to fight. <laughs> maybe he's going to bring up his ex-girlfriend. Like, no, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. So that's what that world is, but whatever. Um, I mean, the good thing was that it enabled me to like, meet and stay in touch with Stone Cold. It enabled me to be on Eric Van Wagenen's radar. It is no coincidence that myself, Eva Lee's, Marty the Moth, were all on that season of Tough Enough and are in Lucha Underground. Okay. I mean, so I, I almost have to backtrack a little bit. Part of me wants to never have done Tough Enough, but likely that is my in for Lucha Underground. So obviously I love being there. And then what's the, yeah, what's the satisfaction of that first season? Like Because we both did Wrestling Society X and maybe there, maybe it's fun that... We were both in our mid twenties when that happened. Yeah. Thinking we were gonna be on TV. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how you felt. I mean, there was still that Jewish like, ugh, it'll never happen. And even <laughs> when it happened. Uh and then, you know, this happening ten years later in your career or whatever it might be. And then finally, I don't know, finally getting on some TV and being sure. a, being a part of a character. Oh, right? it's exciting. I mean, the MTV thing was exciting because I don't think that MTV has their pulse on the youth or anything like that. I think that they air something and by virtue of them airing it, it then becomes cool. It's not the other way around. They don't see an emerging trend and then hop on it. They put something on and then it becomes cool by virtue of it being on their channel. So I thought at that point, 10 years ago, they were going to make wrestling cool again because it's going to make it okay to like. Mm. You can't be like, wrestling, <laughs> lame. Because you can be like, oh, I guess it's okay to like this. Like, it's on MTV. So I thought, man, what an opportunity for the industry. I mean, that's starting to happen now, mm. but I thought it could have got kickstarted 10 years ago. Uh, it didn't, and you know, 
you know, there's an early uh, lesson in wrestling, right? Like one quarter of the things we're told happen. Uh, to Lucha Underground, just credit everything they've told me has happened. So <laughs> it is very nice to, you carry with you like, oh, this will never last and this will never happen. But it's nice to have a home. I, I think uh, Vince McMahon has sort of conditioned people that, uh, the, the the companies will always be bigger than the individual parts because that suits them. And I think fans have really bought into that, no fault of their own, but they don't follow the wrestlers as much as the companies. So when you're without a home, it's like it, they don't get it. So you could be traveling the world having the greatest matches of all time, but if you're not in the Ring of Honor and the Lucha Underground and the this or that or TNA, whatever, it like confuses people. So for years, I was kind of floundering around being offered contracts, but I, I don't know. I, I want to be able to travel the world and do my thing, and I don't like the idea of being tied down uh, anywhere. Um, but once I once I signed with Lucha Underground, because it was something that I believed in, because I'm like, here's a chance for us to... This is what I want as a fan. I mean, like, how many false alternatives have we been sold forever that end up being, like, diet WWE or WWE Lite? This is... You watch five minutes of Lucha Underground, and you're like, oh, this is actually genuinely different. And that hasn't happened since arguably ECW. So it was something that... Uh, I, Wrestling Society X. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah. Dare I say. So this is something I, I, I really believed in and, and wanted to sign with it. And, and I'm glad that I did. And it, it gives me it gives me that home. So now there's just so much more excitement surrounded, uh, uh, surrounding you and, and, and people have more access to what you're doing. So then when I go to shows, it's, you know, oh my God, he's here and blah, blah, blah. And that's, that's really nice. Uh, and then one thing, I don't remember if we talked about this, mm-hmm. but... I, I bring it up to you, not as much as I can. Um, are those prison shows ever going to happen again? Oh, uh, no. We probably did talk about it. Um, all that company and that promoter. I, I think I'd wrestle there for free. Like, what an experience. It really, really was. Um, and, and that's one of the, like, we touched on all these crazy experiences that we get because of. That's the one thing. Because I'll think about it, right? I'll think about when I wrestled like all the way, like on top of North, of, of Canada and, and at a fat camp and at the Gathering of the Juggalos. And you think about just these crazy places. But a prison is just one I haven't done. And you hear about like musicians and obviously Johnny Cash and like. Yeah, that's what I felt like. Is that, yeah, and stand up <laughs> and it's just like, fuck. It'd be so cool to say I did that, or or not even say I did that. Be in be in be in that experience to do yeah, it. Yeah, one of them in particular, like to get to where the ring was out in like the yard. We were like put in with the general population, and like they have to walk in the single file line on this tape that's on the ground, and we weren't given any like preferential treatment, so we had to get <laughs> in that line with everybody. And I was like, okay, and it's prison. So like, I've never been to prison and I'll never go. And like these people are just, everyone's staring at you and you're like, am I supposed to like kill somebody right now? How's this work? I know it seems on TV. You're like, should I kill Greg right now? I don't know what to do. (laughs) And as I'm walking down, already just kind of looking at the ground, being like awkward, awkward, awkward. In my peripheral vision, I see there's a poster for the show hanging up as if like, I don't think they have money in prison or like what else are they going to do? I like the idea that, Prisons do mo- more promoting than real. <laughs> yeah, shows. yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe yeah. They didn't just rely on their Facebook page. Uh, one tweet, right? They actually had posters up. So I'm I'm looking over and I'm seeing myself as an advertisement in a prison mm. that people have been looking at for how many ever many weeks or months. And then here I am. So you know, they're like, oh, there's that dude. And yeah. I'm like, oh, this is just awesomely prison bizarre. famous, man. You're prison yeah, famous. Yeah, but you're like, I don't know if someone's gonna try to like, I don't know, test themselves against yeah. me or whatever it is. And yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. It so was, they're done, huh? They are done. Yeah, oh. I, th- that warden in particular. I think it was his last year, and he was a wrestling fan. So I think he was kind of pulling some strings to make it happen. And he's since retired, because uh, he would he would get way into it and be like, "Tell him this, tell him this." So it's like he was vicariously living through us, I think, <laughs> and, and trying to trying to you know get one under or whatever. But like, yeah, a lot. It, it, I mean, I'll let you know if they ever happen again. They were like during the week as well. So oh, it was just perfect. Yeah, it was great. It was, I, I don't know. Man. No pictures or video was allowed as far as I can remember. Well, unfortunately, but. times are changing now. It's uh... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be my next endeavor. We'll get it on PPV or Let's something. do Wrestling Road Diaries at prisons. That, man, will you, that will you jump in the car with me? Absolutely. I would love to. And we'll to. film... A prison doc- wrestling documentary. That's where I met my best man, the open road. And it's not a, it's not a, like, as funny as that sounds, like, that's me, man. Like, I slept in my own bed like three times this month or whatever. So it's like, I got him from Europe, went right to Dallas this past weekend. Uh, then from Dallas to Gainesville for Fest Wrestling. And Is that I, the first time you did Fest Wrestling? I did it once before in October. Okay. I mean, that's for, that's meant for you. A hundred percent. I think you even texted me when you did the actual Fest, the music, yeah. f- and you were like, and it was, I was laughing so hard because, like, 
this is it's like in his 16th year so i've known about it for 16 years right and you were like dude there's this thing called fest it would be perfect for you and it was very cute but i was like i know it would be and yes it is i think i was also like i don't think i'm meant to be here i think you're supposed to be here (laughs) not me (laughs) yeah which is the most true i mean just going to gainesville just this past weekend was so amazing uh there's this guy john gaunt that plays violin with a guy named chuck reagan uh so these are names in the punk rock world and at the show, some guy comes up to me, buys one of my shirts. Cool, awesome, thank you. At the after party, I see him. So I'm like, oh, I'll just kind of say thanks again because I remember this guy from buying my shirt. As I'm looking at him, he looks at me. I'm wearing a social distortion shirt. He's like, oh, I just did a couple, you know, a couple stints with those guys. I'm like, oh, that's cool. He's like, yeah, I play a violin. And I'm like, how many dudes in this world play violin? So I look at him again, and I'm like, that's John Gaunt. I've seen this guy every time he's come through Cleveland, Detroit, Pittsburgh for the last 10 years. But I didn't think in the wrestling context... It's him. My brain wasn't in punk world. And he was at the show? He was at the show, bought my shirt. I had no idea. Aww. Like, And I'm looking at him I'm like, he's a guy I play violin. I'm like, wait, you're John Gaunt. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, mind blown, you know? And it's like, uh, uh, James uh, plays guitar in this band against me. Him and I went to see Face to Face Sunday night in Gainesville. I mean, it was just so amazing. It's such a small world. And that all, all that, that Gainesville community and that, that punk rock scene that's there and Fest Wrestling captures it. Who knew that the guy doing Fest liked wrestling? Loves it's just, wrestling. Loves wrestling. Yeah. It's it's so great. Are you doing Fest in October? I hope to. Uh, we may film Mooch Underground in October. Ooh, would be the only caveat. Well, I'll be there. I know, I know. I'll be there. I, I, I don't... It's like Halloween weekend, so hopefully we wouldn't film that. Who knows if we even will. Like, they give a fuck about Halloween weekend. <laughs> Yeah, true. I know it's your number one. Uh, right. Yeah, we, we filmed on Easter before, so it yeah. is true that, like, maybe I could sneak out. I have, I've snuck out. Uh, maybe you could put somebody else in the sun of heaven. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Right on. Um, all right, where are you at on the internet, man? Where do they buy these Wrestling Is Forever shirts? Uh, believe it or not, WrestlingIsForever.com. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, you believe that? Hey, I did the website myself. Very proud of really? it. Really? Uh, yeah. Use like, Squarespace? Uh, yes. Use the code Colt? I didn't use the code Colt. You Colt, son of a bitch. Oh, if I'd have known about it. Did you use any code? No. Go back and type in Colt. Oh, crap. Man. Son of a bitch. Because I remember thinking that this goes back to this DIY uh, ethos of punk rock. Like, I needed a website, wanted a website, and I didn't think I could do that myself. I have no knowledge about that. But then when I was hurt, sitting around with a broken leg, I was up all night watching YouTube tutorials. Right. Just I realized that that wasn't an acceptable excuse anymore. Like, mm. yes, I don't know how to do it, but I can figure it out. Especially with YouTube tutorials. Right. Yeah. With anything. Like, there's always... There's excuses, man. We make excuses. And then we accept those excuses. Like, and they, they sound good enough to us. Like, I don't have time for this or that. No one has time for anything. There's no, you're not going to find time. And you, we all have time for everything. You make time <laughs> for it. How many times you check your email every day or do this dumb crap or keep up with some, t- you have the time. We yeah. all do. You make time for it. So I realized that that excuse of I don't know how to do it wasn't good enough anymore. I was like, no, it, I'm going to learn. Like, I, I will learn. So I made the website. I've done all this stuff. Everything's myself. Uh, most people have been like, oh, who are you working with? Or what commission do you get? Which I take as a compliment of like, this is too good for it to be you. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great. So yeah, please, please check it out if you haven't already. Wrestlingisforever.com. Uh, my Twitter is twitter.com backslash mdog Matt Cross. Did uh, you really just do a twitter.com backslash? Yeah. What's wrong with that? You just say at. My handle. <laughs> at. And then uh, Facebook and Instagram are the same, M-Dog, Matt Cross. And as you alluded to earlier, I try to keep them interesting. I've had these moments, especially coming out of this last trip, where I was like, I feel like WWE should hire me just for content. Like, I don't want to toot my own horn too hard, but at the end of here, I will. Like, my Instagram is better than all the other Instagrams. (laughs) Like, and I'm not saying that categorically, but like, when you look at other guys, like, here's some crappy flyer for some show I'm coming up, or here's some food I ate. I'm 4,334 feet in the air, hanging over the edge of Blause Mountain, or Harderklu Mountain in Switzerland, where literally, if I fall, it's a straight 4,334 foot drop, and I die for a picture. That's not worth it. That's dumb. I got caught up in the moment. I'm living life. I'm like, oh yeah, just here, woo. Uh, like, And I just did it. And it, the picture scares me. <laughs> it scares me. And I'm like... Well, I don't even know what other people are posting, but like your Starbucks coffee or whatever. I'm like, man, I just, I'm very proud of, of what I put out there. So uh, yeah, follow along. I try to interact with everybody. Um, and uh, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. So living life, man. Living life. Living life. Thanks, buddy. Thank you, dude. All right, wrestling is forever. Matt Cross is forever in the wrestling game. I think I am too. I think. I don't know. That that might change in a week or two or a year or two or whatever it might be. But for now, for now, wrestling is forever, which I 
Is that irony? It's not ironic. It's stupid. It might be stupidity on my behalf. There's a word for that, but I don't. You can tweet it to me, I guess. Give me a tweet. Before you get on that Twitter, though, let's get into some plugs and upcoming events. I have the best way that you can support ColtMerch.com, DigitalColt.com, Twitter and Instagram at Colt Cabana, Facebook slash AOW Podcast slash Colt Cabana. My storytelling podcast, Pro Wrestling Fringe, plus past archives of the show are ad-free. They're on Howl.fm slash Colt. Use the code Colt and get a free month. ColtWrestling at gmail.com is my very public email. Maybe you're a promoter and put me in an upcoming show or convention. I have a YouTube channel. I also have a website, ColtCabana.com. I also have a P.O. box on that website. And you could be like Roach who is the first person in the history of this podcast to make me pay for a P.O. box that he sent me. That's right, he skimped on the postage by two bucks, and I had to pay for the weird dreidels that he sent me that I ended up giving up to Sam the Dentist because he has real Jewy kids who would love him. It's okay. It was a mitzvah for me to pay for that package. Upcoming July 8th and 9th, Newport and Cardiff, Wales, tinyurl.com slash comedy wrestling Newport and slash comedy wrestling Cardiff. Saturday, July 15th, Marionette Park, Illinois, aawrestling.com. Sunday, July 16th, Toronto, Canada, smash dash wrestling.com. Saturday, July 22nd, Austin, Texas, wrestlecircus.com. Sunday, July 23rd, Gainesville, Florida, festwrestling.com. Saturday, July 29th, Concord, North Carolina. I'm doing commentary at rohwrestling.com. August 4th through the 27th, every single night 10 20 p.m the edinburgh fringe festival edfringe.com see brendan and i do our show live i'm also doing some wrestling saturday august 19th reckless-intent.com sunday august 20th rohwrestling.com saturday august 28th SWEonline.co.uk. when i get back thursday august 31st berwin illinois aa wrestling.com Thursday, September 7th, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Facebook slash First Wrestling. Friday, September 8th, Boise, Idaho. Marty and I are doing comedy, 208comedyfest.com. Saturday, September 9th, Rahway, New Jersey, WrestlePro.com. And it hasn't been announced yet, but I think September 10th in New York City is part of the Now Here This Festival. I'm going to be doing a live art of wrestling. All right, that is is the show for this week. Huge thank you to you guys at home for listening every single week, telling a friend, keeping the buzz alive. Thanks to Matt Cross for being on the show. Thanks to Cable Guy Jeff and Stu Stone, Kid Russell, Matt Jenkins, Dane Miller, and Creaky with tech help. Sponsors, we got sponsors. Highspots.com are a great sponsor, a VOD service that's amazing. You can watch your PWGs there if you need. Also, you can buy AMA knee pads, gear, mask, a wrestling ring. OneHourTees.com, they help run pro wrestling. Crate.com, they help run pro wrestling. Tees.com. This is a place where you can support your favorite independent wrestler directly. Tweakedaudio.com slash Colt. The earbuds that I use get over 30% off and free shipping just because you listen to this show. Fourth of July. I'm doing this on the Fourth of July, and then I'm flying out Fourth of July night. So hopefully you get this fifth or sixth of July. This is going to be weird because I'm going to be in the mountains. So I, I, I'm going to have to find some kind of Wi-Fi someplace and try to upload something. I hope, hope this comes out on the right night. Here's hoping. At that time, I'm going to be doing uh, a lecture <laughs> of some sorts. I think you could watch it streaming online if uh, if you want to. Do lectures.com. Look it up. I don't know what I'm getting into. I might be murdered. Let's hope I'm not murdered in the woods of the mountains of Wales. I think there's going to be any whales in Wales? There probably isn't, but like that'd be great. There's whales out there. That would make a lot of sense. What if there's the hockey team, the Whalers? Or if they would wail on one guitar. Or if Wale, maybe Wale. So whenever I type in my iPhone that I'm going to go to Wales, it always says Wale's, plural. And I kind of laugh because uh, uh, it's Wale, right? Wale's mania. All right, this has been the Art of Wrestling. For Colt Cabana, I'm Colt Cabana. Thanks. Tell me the last uh, band you saw. Face to face on uh, Sunday night in Gainesville. And were they good? Of course. <laughs> yeah. And they're like the first time I ever heard punk rock 22 years ago. So it was kind of a cool full circle moment. Full circle jerk. <laughs> circle jerk's another punk rock band. Are they? Yeah. Keith Morris, from uh, who also was in Black Flag, which you've probably heard of. Keith Morris from The Doors? <laughs> Yes, also the doors. <laughs> Had a really prolific career. 